introduction to long and short objects hello friends i am a parrot and i welcome you to this lesson today in this lesson you will learn how to identify the long object and the short object out of two objects today is sunday and pinky and her mother have gone to the garden for a walk mummy look at that plant all of its leaves are different yes pinky come let's go closer and look at it mummy look at these two leaves the both are different yes pinky the length of both of these leaves is different out of these two leaves this leaf is long and this leaf is short you see this yes mummy this means that out of these two this is the long leaf and this is the short leaf yes pinky you're absolutely right mummy look at that chili plant even in this the length of both the chilies is different out of these two chilies this chili is long and this chili is short right yes pinky you understood correctly now look around and give me another example of a long object and a short object can you do that mm mummy please look at these two sticks out of these this stick is long and this stick is short right yes pinky very good now let's go home so kids can you also identify the long object and the short object out of two objects come let's see these are two pencils now tell me out of these two which one is the long pencil and which one is the short pencil yes out of these two this pencil is long and this pencil is short even you had the same answer right great so kids you enjoyed comparing the length of objects right now you also compare the length of objects around you and tell which is the long object and which is the short object that is all for today in this video we learned how to identify the long object and the short object out of two objects in the next video we will see some more interesting examples of identifying long and short objects Till then bye bye friends Examples of long and short objects Kids in the previous video you learned how to identify the long object and the short object out of two objects in this video we will identify the longest object and the shortest object out of three objects today is a school holiday for chotu and pinky they are both sitting outside their house and playing with their toy cars chotu can you tell me out of all these cars that are kept here Which one is the longest out of these? This car is the longest, isn't it, Pinky? Yes, Chotu. Out of these three cars, this one is the longest car. And out of these, which is the shortest car, Chotu? This car is the shortest, right? Yes, Chotu. You are absolutely right. Out of these three cars, this one is the longest car, and this is the shortest car. See, over there, Papa is 
mummies and your slippers are kept can you tell me out of these three whose slippers are the longest yes pinky papa's slippers are the longest yes chotu and out of these three whose slippers are the shortest my slippers are the shortest pinky yes chotu you are absolutely right this means that out of the three slippers papa has the longest slippers and you have the shortest slippers come on now let's play chotu so kids now you can also identify the longest object and the shortest object out of three objects like chotu come let's see these are three chocolates can you tell me which is the longest chocolate out of these yes this chocolate is the longest and which is the shortest chocolate out of these three yes this chocolate is the shortest this means that out of these three chocolates this is the longest chocolate and this is the shortest chocolate that is all for today in this video we identified the longest object and the shortest objects out of three objects so in the next video we will see some common mistakes in identifying long and short objects till then bye bye friends mistakes in identification of long and short objects so kids in the previous video you identified the longest object and the shortest object out of three objects so friends in this video we will learn about some common mistakes in identifying long and short objects Chotu and his mother have sat down to have their food. Chotu, can you please give me a spoon please? Which spoon, mummy? The short one or the long one? <laughs> Chotu, both these spoons are of the same length. Neither of them is short or long. No, mummy. See, this spoon is long and this spoon is short. <laughs> oh no, Chotu. This spoon looks longer to you because it is placed a little ahead. Keep both the spoons together so that one end of both the spoons is together. Okay, mummy. Here you go. Now tell me, out of these two spoons, is either of them long or short or both the spoons are of the same length? Tell me. Oh, yes, mummy. Both of them are of the same length. Understood. Now, see the three keys kept near you, Chotu. One is my room key, one is your room key, and one is the house key. Now, can you tell me, Chotu, which of the three keys is the longest key and which key is the shortest key? By looking at them, it seems like this key is the longest. and this key is the shortest but before answering your question mummy i will keep all the three keys together so that one end of all the three keys is together okay chotu now tell me now if we look at all the three keys the length of all three is the same that's why neither of them is long or short isn't it mummy Yes, Chotu. Very good. So, kids, now you also won't make a mistake in comparing the length of two or more objects like Chotu, right, friends? Always remember that before comparing the length of objects, first we should keep the objects together so that one end of all the objects is together 
and then the lengths of these objects should be compared. That's all for today. In these videos, we learned how to compare the length of two or more objects. I hope that you have understood this topic very well, friends. Bye-bye. Identifying tall and short objects. Hello children, I'm the parrot and I welcome you to this lesson. Today in this video we will learn identifying the taller and shorter between two given objects. Today is a holiday for Chotu and Pinky. They have come to the zoo with their mother. They saw several animals there. First of all, they saw some elephants. Mummy, look how tall this elephant is. Very tall. And how short is this elephant, Pinky? It seems that the shorter elephant is the child of this taller elephant. Yes, children, you are right. This elephant is taller and this elephant is shorter. After this, Chotu, Pinky and their mother saw some giraffes. Mummy, how short this giraffe is? And this giraffe is taller than this one. Yes, children. Out of these two giraffes, this is shorter and this one is taller. So, children, did you see how Chotu and Pinky identified the taller elephant, the shorter elephant and the taller giraffe and the shorter giraffe? So, can you tell me which of these two trees is taller and which one is Shorter tree? Yes, this tree is taller and this tree is shorter. And out of these two ladders, this ladder is taller and this ladder is shorter. So children, I hope that you enjoyed identifying and comparing taller and shorter objects. Now you can identify the tall and short objects around you and compare them to tell which is taller and which one is shorter. That's all for today children. In this video, we learn to identify taller and shorter objects between two objects. In the next video, we will see some interesting examples of identifying the tallest and shortest of three objects. Till then, Bye, children. Identifying the tallest and shortest objects. Children. In the previous video, we learned to identify taller and shorter objects between two objects. In this video, we will identify the tallest and the shortest of three objects. Today, Pinky and Chotu are coming back from school together. Chotu, just see, these buildings are so tall. Yes, Pinky. Look how tall this yellow building is. Yes, Chotu. Look, this blue building is even taller than the yellow. Yes, Pinky. This blue building is taller than the yellow building. Hey, Chotu. Just look. This glass building is taller than these two. Yes, Pinky, that glass house is the tallest among all these houses. So, this means that the yellow house is the shortest of the three houses. So, can you see children, 
yellow house is the shortest and the glass house is the tallest of all the three houses. After going a while, Pinky and Chotu pass by Sonu's house. They saw Sonu playing with blocks in the courtyard of his house. Sonu is building a house with his blocks. Come on, Chotu. Let's join Sonu. Pinky and Chotu went to Sonu. Three friends started building different houses using the blocks. Sonu, Pinky and Chotu's block houses are ready. So children, can you tell me who has made the tallest block house? You are right children. Pinky's block house is the tallest among these three houses. Children, can you tell me whose block house is the shortest of all? Yes, Chotu's block house is the shortest of these three. Could you guess the correct answer, children? This shows that out of these three houses, Pinky's house is the tallest and Chotu's house is the shortest. So, children, in this video, we learn to identify the tallest and the shortest of three given objects. In the next video, we will see examples of identifying the tall and short objects. Until then, bye children! Examples of identifying tall and short objects so children, in the last video, we identified the tallest and the shortest of the three objects. In this video, we will see examples of identifying tall and short objects. Today, Chotu, Aarti and Sonu have come to fly kites in the park. Today, my kite will fly the highest. Okay, let's see. When three of them were flying kites, Chotu said that time, Look, my kite is flying high. Okay, now I will fly my kite higher than your kite. Sonu was silently flying his kite and his kite started flying high. Wow, Sonu, your kite is flying the highest of all three of us. So children, did you see how Aarti, Sonu and Chotu flew their kites? Let's see what happened after that. Chotu and Aarti were going home together after flying their kites. While going home, they saw an uncle on the way. Chotu, look! How tall that uncle is. Yes, Aarti, you are right. This uncle is much taller than both of us. So children, did you see? Chotu and Aarti saw an uncle taller than both of them. After walking a little further, Chotu and Aarti saw two electric poles. These are the two poles. So children, can you tell me? Which one of these two electric poles, which one is taller and which one is shorter? Yes, this pole is taller and this one is the shorter one. That's all for today. In these videos, we learn to compare the height of two and three objects. I hope you have understood this topic very well. Bye children. Identifying thick and thin objects. Hello children, I am the parrot. Welcome to this video. 
let's see what we will learn in this video. Identifying thick and thin objects and identifying the thickest and the thinnest objects. This evening, there is no electricity in Chotu's and Pinky's house. Mother has asked Chotu and Pinky to bring a thick candle from the market. Chotu and Pinky went to a shop to buy candles. Auntie, please give a thick candle. Take this, children. Choose out of this. Chotu, can you tell me which of these is a thicker candle? Children, can you tell me which of these candles is thick and which one is thin? Well done, children. Amongst these two candles, this one is thicker and this candle is the thinner one. Pinky, this candle is thick and this candle is thin. Okay. Chotu, will this thick candle burn all night? Pinky, let's take a candle thicker than this. Right, Chotu. Let's take a candle thicker than this. Auntie, please give us the thickest candle. Here you go, children. This is the thickest candle. Pinky, this candle is the thickest. Let us take this. Okay, Chotu. Children, Pinky and Chotu took the thickest candle. Can you tell me which of the three candles is the thinnest one? Yes, this is the thinnest candle. Was your answer the same, children? So, children, today Chotu and Pinky identified the thickest and thinnest candle. The next day when the electricity went off, Chotu and Pinky went to play in the park. They were playing hide and seek. First, it was Chotu's turn to hide. Chotu decided to hide behind a tree. Chotu saw two trees in the front. So children, can you tell me behind which tree Chotu should hide? This tree is thin, so Chotu cannot hide behind this. Chotu goes and hides behind another tree. Do you know why Chotu is not seen now? You are right children, this tree is thick. So he can easily hide behind it. That's why Chotu chose to hide behind this thick tree. So children, did you see? Chotu could not hide behind the thin tree, but could easily hide behind a thick tree. So children, that was all for today. In this video, we learned identifying thick and thin objects and identifying thickest and thinnest objects. In the next video, we will see some interesting examples of identifying thick and thin objects. Till then, bye children. Examples of identifying thick and thin objects. Hello children, in the previous video we saw identifying thick and thin objects and identifying the thickest and thinnest objects. In this video, we will see some interesting examples of identifying thick and thin objects. Choto and Pinky want to have a swing on the tree behind their house. Pinky. What all do we need to make a swing on the tree? A piece of wood and a rope. That's it. A piece of wood is right here. Yes, Chotu. Let's get the rope from Mummy. Pinky and Chotu went to get the rope from Mummy. Mummy, we need a rope to make a swing. Okay, Chotu. There are two ropes inside. 
Go and get them. Okay, mummy. Choto brings both the ropes from inside. Here are the ropes. Come on, let us take a rope for the swing. This rope is very beautiful. Yes, let's take this one. Children, this rope is thin. If you make a swing with it, the swing will break as soon as you sit on it. Really, mummy? What should we do now? Children, you should make a swing with this thick rope. It won't break when you sit. Children, do you think this rope is thicker than the previous rope? Pinky, we will make swing with the rope because this rope is thicker than this rope. Well done, children. You were right. Come on. Let me help you to hang this swing. After hanging the swing, Chotu and Pinky swung a lot and had fun. So children, you saw Chotu and Pinky chose the thick rope instead of the thin rope to hang a swing. So children, can you identify thick and thin pencil from these two pencils? Yes, this is thick pencil. And this is thin pencil. So children, that's all for today. In this video, we saw some interesting examples of identifying thick and thin objects. In the next video, we will see some interesting examples of identifying the thickest and the thinnest objects. Till then, bye children. Identifying the thickest and thinnest objects. So children, in the previous video, we saw some interesting examples of identifying thick and thin objects. In this video, we will see some interesting examples of identifying the thickest and thinnest objects. Today, Choto is doing his drawing homework. Choto has taken colors, a large piece of paper and few brushes to paint. Choto, what are you painting? Pinky, I have thought of making a plant in an open field today. Choto picks up a brush and starts making green field. But Choto's brush is making a very thin line and Choto is taking a lot of time to cover the green field. Oh Choto, your brush is very thin. It will take a lot of time to color the field with such a thin brush. So what should I do Pinky? Choto, if you take the thickest brush, then you will be able to paint the entire field very quickly. Okay, alright Pinky. But which of these is the thickest brush? So children, can you identify the thickest brush amongst these three brushes? You are absolutely right children. This brush is the thickest of these three brushes. Yes, this brush is the thickest. Let me use this to color the field. Oh wow Pinky! I was able to color the field quickly using the thickest brush. Yes, but this thick brush cannot be used to make the plant. Yes, you are right Chotu. So you can take the thinnest brush to make the plant. Yes, it will be easy to color the plant with a thin brush. But which is the thinnest brush Pinky? Children, can you tell me which of these three brushes is the thinnest brush? You are absolutely right children. This is the thinnest brush. Here it is Choto, the thinnest brush. Choto finishes his painting quickly. So children, did you see that Choto used the thickest brush to paint the green field? 
and the thinnest brush to paint the plant. So children, can you tell me that which of these three books is the thickest book of all? This is the thickest book and this is the thinnest book. That's all for today. In this video, we saw some interesting examples of identifying the thickest and the thinnest objects. I hope you have understood this topic properly. Bye children! Identifying heavy and light objects. Hello children, I am the parrot. Welcome to this video. Let's see what we will learn in this video. Identifying heavy and light objects. Today Choto and his mother have come to play in the park. Choto wants to play on the seesaw. Mummy, come on, let's play on it. As soon as Choto's mother sits on the seesaw, after Choto, the seesaw tilts down on her side. Mummy, why has the seesaw gone down on your side? Choto, I am heavier than you, so this seesaw has gone down on my side. And you are lighter than me, so the seesaw is in the air on your side. Really, Mummy? Now I understood. So, children, did you see? Mother was heavier than Chotu, so the seesaw went down on her side. And Chotu was lighter than his mother, so the seesaw was in the air on Chotu's side. Today, Chotu played a lot in the park. And he was hungry after getting back from the park. Mummy, I'm very hungry. Please give me something to eat. Chotu, there is an apple and a watermelon in the kitchen. Go and get it. Chotu picks up the apple from the kitchen and brings it out. Take this apple, Mummy. Now I will bring watermelon. Chotu goes to the kitchen to get watermelon. And Chotu tries to lift the watermelon. But he was not able to lift it. Chotu goes to his mother. Mummy, I am not able to lift the watermelon. It's okay, Chotu. The apple is lighter than watermelon. So you picked it up. But the watermelon is heavier than the apple. That's why you couldn't pick it. Okay, Mummy. So children, did you see Choto could pick up the apple because the apple was light. But he couldn't lift the watermelon because it was heavy. This means all objects have some weight. Some are light and some are heavy. So children, that was all for today. In this video we learned identifying heavy and light objects. In the next video, we will learn how to identify the heaviest and the lightest objects. Till then, bye children! Identifying the heaviest and lightest objects. Hello children. In the previous video, we learned how to identify heavy and light objects. In this video, we will learn how to identify the heaviest and lightest objects. Today, Chotu has to water the plants. Chotu is filling water in the bucket to water the plants. After filling the bucket, Chotu wanted to lift the bucket but Chotu was not able to lift it. I am not able to lift the bucket. What do I do now? Let me ask Pinky. Pinky, 
I am not able to lift the bucket of water. Now how do I water the plants? Chotu, the bucket of water is heavy. You will not be able to lift it up. You can get water in a jug. Okay, Pinky. This time Chotu fills the jug and goes to water the plants. Chotu picked up the jug filled with water, but on his way to water the plant, the jug fell off his hand. Oh, Chotu, what happened? Mummy, I want to water the plants, but this jug fell off my hand. Chotu, this water jug is heavy for you. Do one thing. You fill the mug with water. Sure, Mummy. This time, Chotu fills the mug with water. And he waters the plants. In this way, Chotu was able to give water to all the plants. So children, can you tell me which is the heaviest object among these three? Yes, the bucket of water is the heaviest among these. And which is the lightest object among them? Your answer is right children, the mug is the lightest among them. Some objects are kept here, a handkerchief, a bed sheet and a mattress. Children, can you tell me which of these three objects is the heaviest and which is the lightest one? Yes, the mattress is the heaviest and the handkerchief is the lightest. Was your answer the same children? It seems you have learned to recognize the lightest and heaviest objects. So children, in this video, we learned how to identify the heaviest and the lightest objects. In the next video, we will see some common mistakes in identifying heavy and light objects which should be avoided. Till then, bye children. Common mistakes in identifying heavy and light objects. Hello children, in the previous video we identified the heaviest and the lightest objects. In this video we will see some common mistakes in identifying heavy and light objects. Today, Chotu's uncle and aunt have come to his house. Along with them is their little child Chinu, with whom Chotu is going to have a lot of fun. Mummy, can I go and play with Chinu? Yes, Chotu, you can go. Chotu brings a balloon and his ball to play with Chinu. Chotu and Chinu first play with the balloon. Hold this Chinu, catch! Chinu holds the balloon. After some time, both of them started playing with the ball. But Chinu is unable to play. He misses the ball every time. So children, do you know why this is happening every time? That Chinu can hold the balloon very well but cannot catch the ball at all? Yes, you thought it right. The ball is heavier than the balloon. Chinu cannot catch the ball. And the balloon is lighter than the ball. Children, but Chotu cannot understand what happened. The size of the ball and the balloon are the same. But still, how did the ball become heavier than the balloon? This shows that it is not always necessary that the object that looks the same should be of the same weight. Did you see children? The balloon was light, so Chinu lifted the balloon. But the ball was heavy, that's why Chinu was not able to pick it up. Today is Pinky's birthday. 
Chotu goes to a shop to buy a toy for Pinky along with his mother. They saw a teddy bear at the shop. Chotu, let's give this teddy bear to Pinky. No, mummy. Let's give this piggy bank. Since this teddy bear is very big, it will be heavy. Hence, Pinky will not be able to lift it. Chotu, do one thing. You just try picking them. Okay, mummy. Chotu tries to pick up the piggy bank, but he is not able to do that. Mummy, this piggy bank is very heavy. I'm unable to lift it. Yes, Chotu. This piggy bank is heavy. Come on, now try picking this teddy bear. Chotu picked up the teddy bear, and he lifted it easily. Children, can you tell how Chotu picked up such a huge teddy bear? Yes, piggy bank was heavy. Chotu could not lift it, and teddy bear was very light. Chotu picked it up very easily. So, did you see Chotu? Objects that look big in size need not always be the heavy. Yes, mummy, we will give this teddy bear to Pinky. She'll be really happy. So, children, this means that. Objects which look big are not always heavy, and objects which look small are not always light. That was all for today. In this video, we learned about some common mistakes in identifying heavy and light objects. I hope you have understood this topic properly. Bye, children. Non-standard units of measuring lengths of objects. Part one. Hello, children. I am the parrot. And I welcome you to this video. In this video, we will learn about some non-standard units to measure the length of objects by hand. Chotu and Pinky have to get their clothes stitched. That's why they have come to the tailor shop. Auntie, we have to get these clothes stitched for us. Okay, kids, I will take your measurements now. Auntie takes Chotu's and Pinky's measurements by hand, and she is also measuring clothes using her hand span. Auntie, what are you doing with your hand? My dear, I'm taking the measurements. Auntie, what is a measurement? Children, we measure to know the length of something. Auntie, how do we measure? Look, Chotu. I took the measurement of the length of your shirt with my hand like this. One, two, and three. Your shirt is three hand span long. Okay, Auntie. This is how things are measured. Auntie, what is a hand span? Pinky. The measurement which is taken by hand is called hand span. Okay, Auntie. Children, both of you can take measurements of some items kept here. Yes, Auntie. I will measure the length of this chair. One, two, three, four, five, five hand spans long. Very good, Chotu. Pinky, can you measure the length of this table and tell me? Yes, Auntie. One, two, three, four, five, six. This table is six hand spans long. Yes, Pinky. Absolutely correct. So, did you see, children? To know the length of the object. We measure them. In this video, we measured objects using hand spans.
just like the width of this TV. Is one, two, three. Three hand spans wide. So children, that was all for today. In this video, we learned some non-standard units to measure the length of objects by hand. In the next video, we will learn some non-standard units of measuring the length of objects using our foot. Till then, bye bye, children. Non-standard units of measuring the length of objects, part two. Hello, children. In the previous video, we learned non-standard units to measure the length of the objects by hand. In this video, we will learn non-standard units to measure the length of the objects using feet. Today, Chotu thought, why not help his mother in doing household chores? Chotu, do one thing. The rope we had tied to dry the clothes is broken. We have to tie a new rope. Can you go and get a new rope from the market? Okay, mummy. Chotu goes to the market to buy rope. But he remembers on the way that he does not know the length of the rope he has to buy. He comes back home again. I will do one thing. I will measure the distance between the two poles using my foot. According to the distance, I will bring the rope. Chotu began to count with his foot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. These are a total of thirteen foot spans. That means I need thirteen foot long rope. Chotu, after measuring the distance with his foot, went to buy the rope, and he came back home and got his clothes dried. So, children, did you see how Chotu measured the rope using his foot? Do you know that we can measure other objects too with the foot, just like this wheel? This wheel is one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That means nine foot spans. So, children, in this video, we learn non-standard units to measure the length of the objects using feet. In the next video, we will see some common mistakes that should be avoided while measuring the length of the objects. Till then, bye, children. Common mistakes in measuring length of objects. Part one. Hello, children. In the previous video, we learned. Non-standard units to measure the length of objects using foot. In this video, we will see common mistakes while measuring the length of objects that should be avoided. Today, Chotu and Pinky's mother has brought a new blackboard for them. They are both making something with chalk on the blackboard, and Pinky said to Chotu, "Chotu." You can't make anything here. This is my space. No, Pinky, you have plenty of space. I will make it here. Seeing Chotu and Pinky arguing, their mother comes there. Chotu, Pinky, why don't you do one thing? You take a measure of your space. It will tell you if any of you has more space. Yes, Mummy, it is right. But how will we measure, Mummy? Do one thing: bring that pencil from the table and measure the blackboard. Chotu gets the pencil from the table. Chotu, 
First keep the pencil at the starting point and see how many pencils are required to measure. Okay, mummy. Chotu begins to measure the space with his pencil. One pencil, two pencils, three pencils. Hey, Chotu, you are doing it wrong. Why, mummy? While measuring, the entire length has to be measured. No part should be missed. And you are leaving the space while placing the pencil. Oh, now I get it. I will measure it again. So here it is: one pencil, two pencils, three pencils, four pencils. This means I have a total of four pencil long space. Pinky, now it is your turn. I have one pencil. Two pencils, three pencils, total three pencil long space. Children, do you think Pinky has properly measured her space? Yes, you thought right. Pinky has measured it correctly. This means Chotu's space is more than Pinky's space. Come on, let me share your space equally. Mother divided Chotu and Pinky's space equally between them. So children, did you see what mistake Chotu made? He left spaces between two pencils while taking measures with the pencil. That means Chotu did not measure the leftover space. So Chotu did not measure the entire length. We should measure without leaving any blank space while measuring. Today Chotu is measuring the length of the table at his home by his hand. One, two, three, four. Mummy, this table is four hand span long. Chotu, my dear, this table is very long. How did you measure it? Can you measure it again and show? Okay, mummy. One, two. Three, four. It is done, mummy. Hey, Chotu, don't leave any space while measuring. Look at me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Did you see, Chotu? This table is eight hand span long while measuring with my hand. Now you two measure it. Sure, mummy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This table is ten hand span long when I measured it. Now you understood, Chotu. While measuring objects, we should not leave space between two hands. If we do not measure the entire length or miss any space in between, then the measurement will be wrong. Okay, mummy. This means that whenever a measurement is to be made, there should not be any space left between two measures. You are absolutely right, Chotu. So, children, did you see? You should not leave a space between two hand spans because that measurement might go wrong. So, children, that was all for today. In this video, we saw some common mistakes in measuring the length of the objects. In the next video, we will see some more mistakes in measuring the length of the objects. That should be avoided. Till then, bye children. Common mistakes in measuring Length of Objects Part 2 Hello children, in the previous video we saw some common mistakes in measuring the length of the objects. 
In this video, we will see some other common mistakes in measuring the length of objects. Today in Choto's class, everyone was asked to bring five handspan long ribbons. Choto has also brought five handspan long ribbons by measuring with his hand. Neha, look at my ribbon. And here is my ribbon. Come on children, match your ribbon with that of your friend sitting next to you. Do you both have the same length of ribbon? Teacher, I brought five handspan long ribbon. So did Neha. But my ribbon is shorter than Neha's ribbon. Chotu, do you know why this happened? Children, do you know why this happened? Come on, let us see. This happened because the size of each hand is different. Therefore, you should measure with such objects that have standard measurements. Like with a new pencil. If all of us measure with a new pencil, brought five pencil long ribbons, then the length of the ribbon would be the same because the length of the new pencil is almost the same everywhere. Oh, now I understood. So, did you see children? All took a ribbon with a length of five hand span, but they all had different sized hands. And hence the length of the ribbons were also different. So, we should measure with objects which are of the same length everywhere. So, kids, that was all for today. In this video, we learned about few more mistakes in measuring the length of the objects. I hope you have understood this topic properly. Bye children! Hello children, I am the parrot. Welcome you to this lesson. Let's see what we will learn in this video. Identify objects which are near and far and identify the nearest and farthest objects. Chotu and Aarti are walking home from school today. On the way back home, Aarti spoke to Chotu. Chotu, we leave from school to go home at the same time. But you always arrive early and I get home later. Why is it so? Children, do you know why does this happen? Come on, let us see. Aarti, my house is near the school and your house is far from the school. So that's why I reach home early and it takes you more time to reach home. Okay, now I understood Chotu. So kids, did you see? Chotu's house is near the school and Aarti's house is far from the school. That is why it takes her more time than Chotu to reach home. One day, Chotu, Aarti and Sonu were returning from the park after playing. While returning, they wanted to have some ice cream. I am very tired, friends. Let us go and have some ice creams today. Come on, let's go to Lala Bhaiya's shop to eat ice cream. No, that shop is far away. Come on, let's go to Chinmun Aunt's shop. It's nearby. Just look. There is an ice cream shop nearby. Yes, it is nearest. Let's go and eat from here only. Chotu, Aarti and Sonu together took ice creams from the nearest shop. So children, you saw Lala Bhaiya's shop is the farthest from all three friends. And the ice cream shop was nearest. Therefore, the three friends took ice cream from the nearest shop. In this video, we learned identifying objects that are near and far. 
and identifying the nearest and farthest objects. In the next video, we will see interesting examples of identifying the near, far and nearest and farthest objects. Till then, bye friends. Hello children, in the previous video we identified near and far objects and identified the nearest and farthest objects. In this video we will see interesting examples of identifying near far and nearest farthest objects. Today there is no school so Chotu and Pinky are watching TV. That's when their mother comes into the room and says, Chotu, Pinky, don't see the TV from near. Come on, get up from the sofa near the TV and sit on this sofa far from the TV. Chotu and Pinky get up from the sofa nearest to the TV and go to the one farthest from the TV. So children, now Chotu and Pinky are sitting on a sofa which is far from TV. Children, Pinky's favorite doll is also kept in the room. Can you tell me who is near the TV, Chotu or the doll? Right children, the doll is near the TV and Chotu is sitting away from the TV. So children, hope now you know how to identify near and far objects. Today Chotu's maternal uncle has come and he has brought three toy cards for Chotu. Chotu took his new cards and went out to play with his friends Aarti and Sonu. Friends, today I have brought three cards with me. Come on, let's play. Yes, let's race these cars and see whose car goes farthest from here. Yes. Chotu, Aarti and Sonu rotate the keys of their respective cars and place them together at the starting point and get ready for the race. One, two, three. All the cars started moving. After some time, all the three cars stopped. Let us see which of the three cars has stopped at the farthest point and which car has stopped at the nearest distance? I won! I won! How? My car is the farthest from here. Sonu's car is behind my car. And Chotu, your car is nearest to us. So children, did you see? Aarti's car went the farthest and Chotu's car the nearest. So kids, in this video we saw interesting examples of identifying the near far and nearest farthest objects. In the next video we will see some common mistakes in identifying the near far and nearest farthest objects. Till then, bye friends. Hello children, in the previous video we saw some interesting examples of identifying the near, far and nearest farthest objects. In this video we will learn about some common mistakes which should be avoided in identifying the near, far and nearest farthest objects. Today, Aarti and Chotu are talking during their lunch time. Aarti, yesterday I walked to school with my mother and I felt that the school is very far from home. But today I came in car with my father and I felt that the school is very near. Why is it so? 
Chotu, the school doesn't go far or near. Yesterday, when you walked to the school with your mother, you took more time. And today, you came by car. Hence, it took less time. Okay. So, friends, did you see? The school did not get far or near when Chotu was walking or coming by car. It happened because one day it took Chotu more time to reach and the next day it took less time to reach. Chotu and Pinky were playing in the park. Look Pinky, there is a small ball lying in the corner of the park. Hey, yes, it is a small ball. Let's go and get it. Pinky and Chotu went near the ball. Pinky, this ball is looking bigger as we are coming closer to it. See Pinky, this ball was looking small. Now it is looking big. Why is it so? You are right Chotu. It is a big ball. Children, Chotu felt that the ball is small from a distance and when he went near, it is looking big. You are right. Things look small when seen from a distance. When we get closer to the object, we are able to see the real size of the object. That's why they look big when we get near the object. So children, that's all for today. In this video, we have learned about some common mistakes which should not be made while identifying the near far and nearest far objects. I hope you have understood this topic correctly. Bye friends.